Hey everybody, welcome back to the Bazinga Boys podcast, episode three, and you know what we're gonna say, so let's just get it out of the way. Florian, if you were a robot, and I knew, and you didn't, would you want me to tell you? Well, you know, there's so many arguments for or against, you know? <laughs> what, what, what if I can't kill anymore? That's terrible. Uh oh! Better not, better not tell you, me. Do you kill on a regular basis? Don't you? I think Florian should reenact the scene from Ex Machina where he stands in the mirror and starts stabbing himself in the arm. <laughs> <laughs> Just do yeah, it. It's, it's the only way to find out. Yeah. That's what you should do in the when you go to see <laughs> Alex Garland's new film Civil War at the movie theater at the cinema, as you say. Go into the movie theater bathroom that's covered in shit, stare into the mirror, and start stabbing your arm to see if you're a robot. That's your mission. Go film that. And I think the anti-review will get at least 1,200 views. Wow. What Should we put it to a vote if Florian has to do this? Because I vote yes. <laughs> I vote yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, unanimous. So, yeah, that's four, four to zero. We all agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone's in favor of self-harm, okay. <laughs> it's not myself. Uh, we also have the purple colonel. Hello, I'm I'm back again, as always, on the Bazinga Boys. And yeah, I'm glad I'm happy to be here. Uh and uh E Rich is also here. And E Rich, let me ask you, have you been listening to the Bazinga Boys? Uh no, I haven't. I should I should definitely give it a shot. Well, you don't really need to, but <laughs> Yeah, you're missing yeah. out on all this, uh, all this important shit from the last yeah, couple well, episodes who here. Wa- who would want to watch this? My, my point is, E. Rich, th- why I wanted mm-hmm. you here, and this is some perhaps some Florian Lori, some Florian Lorian you might not be aware of. <laughs> yeah. Uh, basically, I've become outnumbered, and I don't want to. Uh, e. Rich, is it safe to say oh, I'm no. I'm not an enemy of the LGBT community? Like these people, uh, may not an enemy. <laughs> these people are in my fan base. They write me depression chamber mm-hmm. emails every day. You know, yeah. about yeah. very. I don't know why they do. So these people <laughs> adore me, uh, but I don't want to be outnumbered. And Florian did come out of the closet on this show. <laughs> oh, Florian, what are you identifying as now? Bye. I like the whole point is that I I went on Grinder. Okay, and you want to fuck boys? Experiment. Well, you want to fuck boys. Bazinga boys, fat maybe, boys? M- maybe some Bazinga boys. No, not fat mm-hmm. boys. <laughs> no, what, I thought that's what you said. Never mind, never mind. I said fem boys. Jeez. Oh, fem boys. <laughs> oh, you want that girl dick? <laughs> yep. Basically, yeah. this podcast was feeling uh, like I, I wandered into a gay bar by mistake, <laughs> and by inviting uh-huh. E. Rich here as my fellow straight white cis male, uh-huh. you know, it, uh-huh. it can at least feel like an Applebee's as opposed well. to a gay bar. <laughs> I have yeah. something I want to announce. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> You're bazinga sexual. <laughs> well, one of us. No. One of no. us. <laughs> yeah, the, the deck is stacked. Everyone's gay now. <laughs> well, let's hear it, Florian. That's a transition. What is our Florian Grinder update of the week? Well, I, I said I would meet that guy who wanted to massage my feet for free. I guess I'll. Mm-hmm. I, I I still haven't gotten back to him. So Jesus, <laughs> yeah, he's I'm waiting, sure. Florian. I, that's I rude. He's, he's doing. He's wanting to do it. For, I've been busy, okay. But then he wants to I, do something for you for free, and you I, can't even deign him with a response. Well, he only wants me for my stinky feet, okay. It's, it's, <laughs> It's not that simple, but anyways, I uh-huh. I found a, a beautiful fanboy, okay, from mm-hmm. from Germany and pretty close, and yeah, it, it might work out, you know. And then uh, wow. we re- we really hit it off. There is such a thing as true love. <laughs> yeah, and then it turns out he doesn't use WhatsApp or Telegram. That's weird, mm-hmm. isn't it? How does he meet up with his friends? And then- does he text message? Well, I do have something to reveal. Uh, this past uh-huh. week, I did make a grinder account and change <laughs> oh, the GPS no. to be Florian's Village. <laughs> and I'm now going to read the entire DMs that we had together, Florian. Are wow, you ready? Incredible. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I well, want I was... you to lick my sweaty toes. Guess who said that to who? Well, the, well, the, the massage guy again? How did this happen? <laughs> I, just, I figured all of your... Grinder DMs were about feet in some way. 
Uh, just the massage guy. <laughs> Lorraine, tell me how tell me how Grinder works because like, do you like put in what you like in into that, and then you get matched with yeah, people you can. that like uh, the you, same things? No, it's like you just get like their pictures and then you click on them, and then it turns out you can only click on like one picture a day and message that what one person. The fuck, it's it's the most <laughs> cancerous fucking dating app of all time. I don't know why the gays put up with it. Honestly, like, what the hell? But yeah, it's, no competition. That's, that's you can the only be gay reason. on Tinder. I mean, I get. Can you? I guess. Uh, I would hope so. They would have a big <laughs> fucking lawsuit if you couldn't. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so the Bazinga so. Boys is where we talk about gay culture, and anyways, so so he didn't have those those convenient ways of getting in contact so he gave me i I gave him my discord all right Mm -hmm. and then i i went on a hike had a a a day pretty productive you know and then i completely forgot about it and then he he it was just like a bunch of random people adding me so i i I made fun of his profile picture because i thought it was just a rando and and then he blocked me so that was it wow on on Tinder, you're, uh, on, on wait, you're bullying gay dudes on Grinder for having ugly photos, and then they block no, you. No, on, on Discord, I, oh. I I saw it was just like some annoying monkey fan messaging me, you know, and then I saw like, mm-hmm. wow, that's, that's oh, but it was your gay thing. boyfriend. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Imagine that. Wait, so oh. your monkey derangement syndrome is denying you <laughs> true love? <laughs> yeah, Many such so. cases. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I thought you it was you in disguise anyway, so I probably dodged a bullet there, you know? Oh, wow. <laughs> You're missing out. Maybe we are true love. That might be the... Like, that's the arc of the podcast storyline, oh, is me and Florian fall in love while watching the show every week. That's a huge yeah. twist right there. That'd be yeah, legend. Just... Wait for it. We're not going to do that show, Derry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just go wait for you to put on the stockings and become a fanboy, you know? Should we do How I Met yeah, Your Mother, How I Met Your Father every week? No, oh, my please. God, no. Please, no. I think the second so... show was canceled pretty early, so it wouldn't last <laughs> too long. <laughs> we, we, we'd run out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Should I go back to reviewing Living Biblically? Did you watch all of that show? Not all of it. Oh, maybe. I, I might have reviewed that. like three or four of them back in the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, God friended me. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed God friended me back in the day. I bet you did, Florian. It's a good show, okay? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Florian, your, your content uh, consumption is... I, I continued watching it for a while, okay? It was good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he, t- he told me that watching One Piece is a chore and he might catch up in 10 years. I mean, there's wow. no hurry. Jeez, I still haven't called He's in a hurry God to binge. Me. God friended me. I haven't... I, I'm still going to catch up on it, okay? Where oh, are geez. you in One Piece? I, I want to deny these people Big Bang Theory as long as possible. Where are you... <laughs> where did you quit One Piece? Uh, God... Okay, I guess they were in Fishman Village. Actually, I don't know. Wait, what? Fishman no, no. Village. That's really, that's what? really early on, isn't it? No, it's on yes, the it's, it's very like fucking early. Th- it's halfway through. Shut up. Yeah, no. that's five hundred chapters. You're behind. Halfway through. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, what you think? Well, how many? How many would you watch? Are you, you going to watch five hundred episodes? I'm basically caught up. I'm like five weeks behind or something. You watched the anime? Yeah. That that blows my mind. Wow. Well, let me know when you get to eleven hundred E Rich. It was a spectacle. Yeah. Sounds sounds was, fucking great. I was fucking propagandized into looking at One Piece because of these fucking shows here where you talk about it all the time. And I, I looked it out at it on Netflix and there's just this it doesn't list them in like seasons like a real show would. It just has these big massive chunks of like, oh, fifty episodes, twelve episodes, two episodes. Yeah, that's it, really I, weird. I've seen that before. Small chunks. It's weird, and it and it makes the whole thing look so terrifying. I, I decided I wouldn't bother. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, this that's is the man who wrote on Letterboxd that <laughs> S- smiling friends is better than the Simpsons ever was. Yep, and uh, I'm right. You're, stand by it. You're that guy. He's got just yeah. bad takes. He, he, he's 21. Like purple. He, he spent purple. half of his life in fucking COVID lockdown. Like, yeah, like, let's be yeah, real. Damaged. The Simpsons hasn't been good in about fifteen years, probably, maybe, maybe more than that, probably more than that. But it still had at least ten or twelve seasons of amazing shows. 
which are all like fucking 25 episodes long. So you're saying that a show that's approximately two hours is better than a show that has <laughs> like 50 hours worth of amazing 50 content. hours of like S tier material. Look, I don't, I don't go with quantity over quality here. Okay. That's no, it, it's quality. You, you the, the, quantity is, the quantity is quality. My friend, <laughs> like it's, it's 50 hours know. of some of the best, it, like even at family comedy shit at the most the generous we can be. If we said that smiling friends was two pure hours of S tier, which it's not, uh-huh. but if we say it is the Simpsons just objectively has more S tier episodes objectively. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Smiling friends. It hits me as a, as a zoomer of the internet age. It who hits me who so is well? So who perfectly. is your favorite character in smiling friends? And why are they, they your favorite? Character? It's, it's the is fat it, yellow well, one. Uh, there's so many to choose from here. Honestly. There's so many to choose from. Is it the, the boss? Uh, it's Gwimbley. It He's jumping boss. on the Gwimbley it, train. I like Gwimbley. Gwimbley. He's pretty good. He's right up there. Uh, is it I think Glep? uh, uh Glep's, is, Glep's up there. He's fun. He's, he's Gwimbley. really cool. Gwimbley is uh, annoying. Think... Frog is better than Gwimbley. Ew, ew, ew. No, Frog is, <laughs> frog is pretty Irish, good. For fuck's but sake. I, I, think that's, <laughs> I think that's on the lower end of episodes. Uh, oh my my God. favorite character is probably uh, uh, Desmond, played by the great Mike Staklasa. And is I that think the first he's, one? He's, got a, he's very relatable. In the first episode, I think. He's depression. trying to kill himself. Yeah. yeah, that's the first one. So you think that Mike... Staklasa's character being depressed and wanting to kill himself is a funnier character than the Simpsons ever had. Yes, I do. Wow. Like that's just wow. that's a sign of a culture in Simpsons. decline and like the new generation is not all right. Their brains don't mm-hmm. appreciate anything that takes sophistication <laughs> or any thought at all. Like that is that's- so easy to write. Hey, Mom, I'm fucking... afraid. I'm afraid you're purpose. Uh, you're actually to blame for this. This guy grew up watching <laughs> your content. He, of wow. course, he idolizes depressed, cringe lords. Hey, purple, eat my shorts. Don't have a cow, man. Uh, <laughs> other Bart you Simpsons. Sound, you sound like phrases. you sound like a fucking boomer. You might as well be telling me to get off your lawn. That, that's Good not God. boomer. Well, so while you're at it, you should get off my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll be sure to avoid it if I'm in the area, I guess. <laughs> Zoomers think that a lawn is the area in front of their apartment. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. It's the fucking, it's, it's, you don't have a lawn if you have an apartment, okay? It's gonna, it's wow. gonna become a dead concept pretty soon here, but not quite yet. I mean, it should be. <laughs> fucking lawns are terrible. <laughs> but- Oh, so is Florian a fuck cars and a fuck houses guy? Like everybody should be in a walkable apartment city? Dude, if you have lawns, you have suburbs, and American suburbs are the worst. <laughs> like, Have you been to I an American know. suburb? Yes, I've been to an American oh, suburb. Wow, you've been to America? Yeah. Huh. Like you, where where did like, you go in America? Uh, California. Like, you can't get anywhere without okay, a car. It's fucking insane. It's, it, well, that's, that's true. California. But and also, like, California it, is fucking a different story. Yeah, and imagine, imagine watering a fucking lawn in California. Yeah, okay, wow. I'm, I'm sure that's a good use of water in a drought. You know, well, I agree that Californians are issues. wasteful and stupid. Yeah, <laughs> to some extent, all that water could be going to making an almond. <laughs> yeah, a single almond. <laughs> a single almond. Yeah. <laughs> hey, if it makes my diarrhea ten percent less bad, I'll drink almond milk instead of cow milk. It's worth mm-hmm. it to kill the environment to make me poop slightly better. Anybody here like oat milk? Goat milk? No, no. That's semen. No. E rich. Oat. <laughs> <laughs> Goat milk is semen. <laughs> hey, I'm pretty sure almond milk is still better for the environment than cow milk. Yeah, what? I'm saying oat milk. I, oat. I don't think that's true. Oat. Oh, for sure. Cows are insanely wasteful. But they're so delicious. They're they're, like, you can get so much from them. Yeah. <laughs> Steak. I bet one cow has more protein Pork. than one almond. Like, come on. Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, Do you think so. before you speak? <laughs> what, me? Should we talk just, about yeah. the Big Bang Theory? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say we've been dodging it pretty well for a while mm-hmm. here. But, yeah, I don't know how you manage these great episodes. How could you even prevent us from talking about it. So, Erich, what did you think of Hundreds of Beavers? I didn't see Hundreds of Beavers. I want to see It's not out yet. I think, well, it might be out actually by the time this episode of uh, a Big Bang Theory podcast comes out. I think it's going to be on digital this week. We should try to find it then. Yeah. Yeah. Let's torrent that movie as a, to punish them for not coming to my theater. 
Yeah, I was gonna say hundreds of beavers and the people's joker are the two like that one movies that Aggie and I have seen that on 420. Shout yeah. out, can't wait. Hell yeah. Makes sense. People's Joker is a Kino coming soon to a Kino near Hell you. yeah. I'm gonna have to make a trip then. Uh, Monkey Man? Was that any good? Yeah, Monkey Man was good. Was pretty good. So the opening of the Big Bang Theory episode three, we get, and this is shocking, it's 20 full seconds of the audience laughing hysterically, but the characters are not making jokes. It's mm-hmm. just five or four men playing video games and having fun like we do every day in normal life. But the audience thinks this is the funniest thing they've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, just, I, just I guys playing was, games. They're rating in wow. There were definitely chokes there. What are you talking about? Okay, you need to pay attention when I speak because I'm going to get angry. The (laughs) opening 20 seconds, the audience laughs hysterically with no dialogue. Okay, well. That's what I I said. You just rejected that very specific claim. Okay. Fuck you. (laughs) Now I need to check. I win. Judge E. Rich, who wins this round? I mean, Monkey's definitely right. <laughs> so I'm at the top of the power ranking. That's mm-hmm. right. We're doing power well, rankings again. You're, you're telling me you remember 20 seconds of laughing in, at the first. Because I take notes because I respect and care about I mean, the podcast. That's that's literally what happened in the beginning of the episode, man. You can't. Well, yeah. <laughs> I guess I must have just instinctively skipped that part. Damn, fuck. Just like when you're watching the Neroi. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. Hey, I got to the good stuff, all right. <laughs> but speaking of my, uh, I mean, unless you guys had more thoughts on this, uh, my power ranking of the characters, Sheldon retains his top spot because uh, in their game, he gets the Sword of Azeroth and becomes the Sword Master, and he then teleports away from the peasants and sells the sword on eBay. So he, he's getting real world currency and treasure for this accomplishment, and uh, that makes him the, the true winner. Well, you're missing the point because he's doing it because he wants to to role play as the character, which is really done <laughs> so so strangely because that's definitely not how that game normally goes, right? Well, if if he, the behavior fits his character description and the race of his character, I I think he's <laughs> he's race. profiting in real life and staying true. Like he's accomplishing the point of a role playing game. Like yeah. so, so precisely that he's getting currency in real life. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, he worked those hours, real hours to probably, earn it. It's not like he like put in a code to get it. He actually did. It'd be like if you played the Wheel of Fortune video game and when you won, it printed out the money. Like he beat a video game so good that he profited from it. These other fucking nerds got nothing. <laughs> Well, the other guy bought the sword. Yeah, so he's down. Raj is still at the bottom of the power thing because he might have the sword, but he lost real money. Fucking no take. Oh, Howard did. Not helping you anymore. (laughs) Oh, my bad. I I didn't want to be uh, racist and assume that you had all the money to buy shit, but. Yeah, there you go. Your first racist choke towards shoes. So you you've been waiting for it. Yeah, every other race is okay. Every other religion's fine, but if you make a Jewish joke, Florian's gonna get a little upset. Well, no, I, I just saw you'd appreciate it. I, oh. I liked it. Yeah, uh, thank you. <laughs> you know me so well. Yeah. Uh, you guys have any thoughts so far? I found the scene pretty relatable. I'm looking to uh, sell my Team Fortress 2 items. I've got a lot of <laughs> expensive hats. and uh, I say you got a bunch of there. hats that uh, Gaben sold you at one point. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I want to cash out on it because that game, I don't even play it, and it's going to die within like three years, I'm certain. So. Yeah, you better you better sell it before you before it loses its value, and then you can finally afford some Game or Lame games to review. Yeah. You won't yeah. even buy your co-host the game to review with you. I actually did buy Tomb the last Raider. One. That's the first one, though. Still waiting for you to play it. Wow, uh, so he bought you a game and you won't even play it. Now I'm mad at you. It's really <laughs> bad. I'm, I hate to say it, but you know, well... <laughs> Well, wow. I'm, I'm I'm planning on it, okay? I'm too busy <laughs> editing your shit for you, okay? Is, Holy yeah. fuck. Now, Florian did send me a copy of Isaac that I, has been unopened for about six years, so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. <Great> friendship. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Poor it's probably Isaac. a fine game. <laughs> it's a, it's a famously a very good game, The Binding of Isaac, so uh, it's worth trying at least once. Especially if you got it for free. <laughs> like, yeah. He can't. He'll never try it. 
Yeah, uh, you can just stream it, make content out of it, and make some make some. I would back. never abuse Florian for content. <laughs> no, but no. Leonard walks out to the hallway, <laughs> and uh, Doug, aka Chad, is basically about to fuck Penny. Like they're all over each other, you know, just out in the open. And Leonard, he's he's gonna wig out. Yeah. He's, he looks like very anxious and upset about it, like so visibly that I'm I'm shocked that even though these are like two dumb characters, they don't even notice, which is crazy to me. You think that Doug was stupid? Yeah, I, I don't know. I assume dating anyone this. dating Penny is kind of dumb, at least in some way. So. Hmm. I don't know. No way, dude. <laughs> Come on. What are you kidding me? Why would you have Penny? to be dumb to date Penny? Yeah, Penny's great. Well, her, her, her previous boyfriend was pretty dumb, at least. At least seemed in what to be. way? In what way was he I dumb? He, he he defended his TV from the nerds. <laughs> because clearly, what they're going for is there's the there's the stupid jocks and the smart nerds, and that's the whole that's the conflict of the show. I mean, that's totally not what I'm getting because I'm I'm seeing the nerds being the idiots all the time here. Well, that's true, but that's you know because they're the main characters, and the show's gotta gotta have some conflict in it. They gotta make some bad choices. Well, I think as a nerd yourself, you might still see the world in this binary of, well, I might be a nerd, but I'm the smart one and all the chads and jocks must be stupid. Mm -hmm. And that's how you're interpreting the show. But really, it's revealing that, you know, even smart people make stupid decisions and vice versa. Somebody you think is dumb might have a lot more street smarts and wisdom than you. Maybe, but maybe that's just my biases coming through. I don't know. But I I do think that's that's what they're going for in the show. Is all of Penny's other boyfriends are dumb because we're supposed to like Leonard and want him to succeed over them. So, well, Everidge, as a man who was both a Chad and a genius, how do you feel yeah. about this? <laughs> um, I think Chads get a uh, bad rap a lot of the time. I think nerds are just jealous, and uh, they should work on themselves and improve themselves. Yeah, and, Purple, uh, how tall are you? Because Everidge here is like six foot three, and me and Florian are like five four. Um, mm -hmm. Let me check my fucking license. I don't actually know offhand. Oh wow. my god! That's a, well, wow. it's, it can't be that high then. Uh, One hundred seventy-eight <laughs> centimeters. Oh Jesus I Christ! I don't know, I don't know, know what, what that, that is. is. For fuck's sake, dude! <laughs> that, that's actually pretty much my height. So there you go. Oh god! So five foot three or five foot four? How, how tall are you, Florian? <laughs> well, I, I think it's like between five five and five six. <laughs> oh, my oh my goodness! That's five point eight feet. <laughs> which is a uh, five ten? Okay, that's that's not bad. No, that's not right. Five ten? I don't know. It says five ten when I Google it. One seventy eight really? centimeters is five ten. That's pretty good. Warren, have you been five ten this entire time? And you just have didn't know. <laughs> oh wait, no. I guess I guess he's slightly higher than me. All right. <laughs> there we go. Well, yeah, five inches is not slightly. Four or five inches is not slightly. <laughs> no, I, I'm. I'm 169 centimeters. Nice. But, but Shut the passport, fuck up, E. Rich. <laughs> my, my passport says 171. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're lying on your passport. Huh? <laughs> no, yeah. they, they measured me and I had shoes on. I don't know. <laughs> that's about five feet, six inches, apparently. So, yeah, that's okay. a good. That's, okay. I got a good, good four inches. Five on foot you. six isn't, isn't horrible. Yeah. I just want to, for the record, it's I want to make bad. it clear I'm, I am five seven, so even I'm taller than Florian. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, wow. No. So does that make me king of the manlets, and he's like my jester? <laughs> yeah, basically. Well, no, I'd be the king. <laughs> no, because I'm, I'm a manlet, but I'm taller than you, so I'm the no. king of the manlets. Yeah. I don't know. That's not how it works. <laughs> be that, be the, but I, I don't think a midget you. is the king of the manlets. <laughs> Fucking seven little Johnstons running around. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Okay, yeah. so anyway, back to the show. I think Leonard, maybe he's 20% gay like Florian. He might be a little bisexual because then he, after calling Doug bro, he goes inside and, and says that the, the guy was fine, which is a little mm -hmm. bit gay. Yeah, I mean, look at that guy. That guy is huge and muscular. Like, uh, I guess he's like the whole package. I know? think all four of us can agree with that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, he was so fine. Uh, and so, and Sheldon lets him know that uh, jealousy is a pointless emotion. So again, Sheldon gets more points on my power ranking. Like, well, that's well, a smart thing to say. This is such an interesting episode because Leonard is is just like so pathetic. <laughs> yeah, 
And then Sheldon tries to fix him, but then he's still Sheldon is kind of based in this. <laughs> Sheldon's kind of based in this episode. Like I think everything he says is pretty much right. I mean, um, well, he does that a lot, but he's such a jerk about it that it doesn't really. He has he know. has a much more realistic outlook than uh, Leonard does. So yeah, I think Sheldon's pretty cool. Well, no, he's Sheldon's... been pretty based for the last few episodes. He's mm. shocking. Dude, they Sheldon don't says that, that Leonard has no chance at all at dating anyone. Like, you think that's, that's the way good? the way he's the way he's acting now? Absolutely, that's true. Yeah. Well, I'm, I don't think that's what what he's basing it on, though. I th- I think he's just like talking about looks, right? Yeah, Sheldon like- does a lot of looks matching. Like he, he says that uh, the dietitian with the limp and the lazy eye would be too attractive for Leonard. So he, mm-hmm. he's just constantly comparing physical qualities. It's it's very strange, very non-intellectual and of him. If you take the glasses off of that guy playing Leonard, he's he's going to look like a pretty normal, average guy at least. So he's well, got I, he's I, got a good jawline on him and stuff like that. Yeah, so. yeah he's he's kind of handsome actually. Hey, it's Johnny Galecki. This is a fucking like Hollywood actor. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah he this looks, is like Hollywood. He looks ugly. good compared to the mm-hmm. other one. Well, he's not ugly. I think he he looks like weirdly Chad like compared to the other three. Okay, we're doing it. Rank the four guys in the order from most to least fuckable. E. Rich go. <laughs> number one, Raj. Number two. Why no? Wait, time out. Raj is the most fuckable. You have to explain. You can't just go straight through him like that. <laughs> well, because he never talks. Is that I it? think he's got good hair. I think uh, madness. I, I like was going to say Raj, too. He's good. He's a good looking guy. Yeah. Wow. What about based on like uh, personality, though? <laughs> What's his name? Howard at the bottom. Uh, <laughs> you think yeah. the sexual assault guy? <laughs> yeah. Um, That's anti-Semitic. The, uh, sexual <laughs> harassment, I mean. Wait, no. What's the... <laughs> I'm trying to character. think. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. Am I doing... Sheldon? Or personality right now? Both. Uh, the total package <laughs> of a man you want I to mean, fuck. Yeah. Raj at the top. Uh, Sheldon number two. Uh, uh, Johnny Galecki. Who, what's his fucking character's name? Leonard. So why Leonard. Sheldon over Leonard? Howard. If you're saying that Jonathan, whatever the fuck, because, has because like, such the personality, good looks. the personality of uh, Leonard is fucking awful. What? Yeah. I mean, okay, he does a lot of lying in this one, but he's normally like he's a, nice a liar. Guy. He's he's not confident. He doesn't uh, like value others for their actual qualities. He just makes value judgments about them, and then yeah, goes on with his life. When does he do that? I mean, he eventually has to relent when the guy is pretty cool. But like, yeah, like at first he's like, oh, she's with that Chad out there. Uh, what's bad about that? Like, it's not accurate. I mean, he's just an annoying little nerd. Wow. <laughs> You're just angry at his Chad phobia, which is uh, I don't think a lot of other people are going <laughs> to. Well, why would Everich want to fuck a guy who's that? biased against him? Mm hmm. Like, if he hates Chad's, then Erid should not be interested. Florian, what is your ranking of the men? Well, I, I definitely think Leonard first. I, I think he's adorable, <laughs> you know? Wow. I, I mean, obviously, he was a little... in a, a little. Well, he lies a lot. That sucks. But uh, mm-hmm. I think he's just trying to do it like like some people think is, it's going to help them win in their first date. But I think he's, he's normally pretty sincere. And then, uh, well, I guess... I guess how God the, the other three are so terrible. I get I guess Rash is the least awful, just because he's boring. But then then Howard is is like really obnoxious with his personality. I guess he looks slightly better than Sheldon at least. <laughs> and then well, Sheldon is just constantly condescending. So I don't know how how you guys put him so highly. Okay, should I go or should Purple go? go I can do it quick. It's Raj uh, Leonard. Uh, Sheldon Howard, yeah. No justification. <laughs> no, I think it's self-evident why I'm correct on this, and I think most will agree with me. Okay, we're yes. going for the total package, okay, and listen, all four of these sweaty nerds are not going to give you good sex regardless, and none of them are particularly sexy, so you really got to think of other things. And clearly, Howard the Jew here, he has a lot of money to waste <laughs> on fucking fake swords and video games. He could probably get me a nice, like, diamond necklace or some sort of... He, wow. a, a, after he cooms on me, he's gonna buy me something nice, so at least I get all, something to take home. All in it for the money, but he isn't he always, like... It, all four mother? of them are gonna give bad sex, Eridge. Isn't, like, isn't, isn't he always yelling about his mother and he lives with his mother? Wait, does he live with his mother? 
It's a yeah, one-time yeah, event. I think I can put up with anything to get a nice, you know, <laughs> carrot. Oh, oh, I thought we were going to have a relationship. Okay, well, whatever. <laughs> uh, I'm just, I want to get down and dirty like Penny in a 36-hour sex orgy with uh, some, you know, forgettable <laughs> wow. guy. But we'll get to that. Wow, what a what a great development for her character. You're just gonna play mm-hmm. World of Warcraft with them. That's that's the orgy. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, so I fuck Howard number one, then Sheldon number two, because I I think his wisdom and his intellect could rub off on me. It'd be like sleeping with Oppenheimer for a night. Like you get more out of it. He'll start reading from books and shit after he splooges yeah, in you. About <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like he'll teach you some equation on his blackboard. Uh. Let's see. Do I want to be racist against Indians or just uh, disregard <laughs> Leonard? It's tough to say. Whatever one is funniest, pretend disregard that's what I said Leonard. for three and four. Because mm-hmm. I don't care. Rip. Yep. Uh, so am I to believe that this is a Roseanne reunion in the next scene, E. Rich? It is. It is. Well, Absolutely. Educate me. We've got uh, Johnny Galecki, who was on Roseanne, correct? Yeah, I think these two uh, characters were in a relationship on that show. Incredible. Yeah, Yeah. because like Roseanne's daughter is uh, this like chick at work who he kisses and then she says, I didn't feel anything. And that's the joke. It's Mm -hmm. like meta. Okay. Because they had this whirlwind romance for like seven seasons on a different show. Oh, that just flew right over my head. Then Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's fucking Roseanne's daughter. (laughs) <laughs> There's so much stuff on sitcoms and on TV shows, like basically general network shows. That's it's so inside baseball that like if you have no idea about what came before, like you just have no concept that like this is special to audiences who have seen nine seasons of Roseanne or whatever. And that's why that scene was probably awkward and unfunny if you don't get the mm-hmm. reference. Well, I mean, yeah. I, there's they still have a decent yeah, joke in there, it's... you know. Yeah, but it it was a little long. Like if well, the, the no real punchline is that. She says that there's nothing between them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I, I just enjoy hearing this nerd talk all the time. The, the way they just talk. That's <laughs> gotta be why you're okay with this. Because all the nerd talk shit, you're just like, oh, yes, this is exactly <laughs> what I like to see in a sitcom. They pull out yeah, the Saurus. Oh, really? You don't get these words? Okay, wow. Just using that's- complicated words is not a joke. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they they do that, okay? That's this sucks, to me but... is like the lowest form of comedy. It's literally just like, oh, the nerd can't speak right because he has to say everything all fancy, like because he knows all these words. Shut the fuck up, Chuck. <laughs> yeah, Lorry, talk like a human. This you. is not your your senior thesis. This is a conversation mm-hmm. between people. Yeah, I mean, like the, obviously they overdo it, but like in general, they they talk about some pretty interesting concepts. That's what I'm talking about, not just the. The fancy words, obviously. Well, lower minds talk about people and gossip. <laughs> higher minds talk about ideas, Florian. So tell me about these juicy nuggets of, of ideas mm-hmm. that you got from this. <laughs> well, I mean, for one, I thought it was interesting that he immediately knew how to, to calculate the the correct time to shoot that laser. You know, I mean, that's obviously like pretty pretty unrealistic but it, I, I thought that was interesting for his character but in general how they how they went about the the thought process here where he's asking her out as an experiment of whether or not they would be whether or not they would match and then she she's so willing that she would just be willing to go straight straight to the kiss you know to to skip the entire date that was really interesting to me i mean did, did you Florian, think are you going to try that out on on the boys that no. you uh <laughs> no oh my no. god that would be so romantic florian like just yeah, no, right I, when you meet really... them have a kiss to see if you feel a spark mm-hmm. <laughs> don't be a prude dude it's rude <laughs> I, I don't even like kissing but yeah, what? Dude, it's rude dude you better put that in your <laughs> in your bio on your dating app i don't like kissing because that's fucking important <laughs> yeah, like for me 90 like percent of it is kissing the boy Wow, yeah, I bet. <laughs> but anyways, like it, it was, it was pretty strange though, because like obviously you, you, you'd think that the relationship would come out, come down to more than just whether or not they have a good kiss. You know, I, I thought the date itself might have been a pretty important indicator to whether or not they, they, they would match. You know, well, they've been friends at work for a long time, mm-hmm. so they already know each other. 
And that was just to see if there was any romantic interest, but yeah, no, she decides the, the to keep point, him in the friend zone. The yeah, point of the date, sense. I believe, is to like, yeah, like see if you like get along with each other and can stand to be in each other's presence for more than like an hour um, alone. And they already probably know that from work. So, well, I think it's a little different if you're dating, but okay, I, I guess it makes sense. <laughs> What kind of conversations do you have on a date that you don't have just normally? Hmm. Yeah, I guess I guess you might be right about that one. But I mean, you try at a different level, don't you, when you're on a date? Florian, every day is just a different series of dates that you go on with uh, <laughs> various people in your life. Yep. That's how it goes. Is your brain like one of those video games with three different dialogue options and you have to look at them all and choose which one you want to continue with? Mm -hmm. uh, didn't we learn earlier that, uh, Florian, you don't have like an internal dialogue? Wasn't that one of the conversations in one of the last episodes? Or? Yeah, I feel like, like I, I could think about something normally or I could have a dialogue, but it would be slower and less efficient to have the dialogue. So I don't know, man. It's weird. Yeah, that's that's odd. Well, anyway, uh, the nerds do go to a dance class full of elderly people to find a, a, a partner to sleep with. What is, what is the joke here that like they're going to fuck these old people? Hell yeah, that's, brother. That, that's such Very. a weird joke considering that they like that Leonard is specifically so fucking thirsty mm -hmm. and, and he is so desperate. And then he and then the joke is that he that he's not going to try with the old ladies like really. It's a, it's a two part joke because Howard suggests it, and the joke is that he's gonna fuck all the old women if he if he can, and uh, and then the other part of the joke is when they cut to them all dancing and they they look very awkward dancing with these elderly women on mm -hmm. screen for like a few seconds, mm -hmm. and that's it. Florian, what is the oldest you would go, boy or girl? I mean, I. I don't know. I, I I could probably go pretty pretty up pretty high. Maybe maybe sixties. Okay. All right. For both genders. I mean, well, it, it, you want to be the sugar baby. Well, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I want to see what baby. it's like on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, they're just gonna be fit, I guess. That's Otherwise, right. Be, and like, at I dance class, hopefully they are. Yeah, no, I wouldn't want to have like the. The wrinkly old body that wouldn't be great but if they stay fit it could work yeah florian you want the guy from uh nathan for you the uh the movement guy oh god maybe <laughs> no uh, so anyways it's like another thing with the with the video games like you, you think normally like you have different levels of notes right you have the the, the stupid nerds who waste all of their time playing video games. And then you would have the smart nerds that go into physics and stuff. So it's, it's really strange that the show kind of thinks that they, they do both of these things. Like how are these, how do these guys have like successful careers? And then they play a video game for like 70 hours straight. Like, are you trying to, is, it, is this bait? You no, trying to bait I'm a reaction out of people? How do people? He's asking how do people with jobs also play video games? For seventy hours, I mean, Jesus! Are you, you're just gonna work like nine to five, and then the whole weekend is just like one whole video game. That was Erich in college. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto Four came out, and he was addicted. <laughs> yeah, I made an M Night Shyamalan looking guy, and I walked around and killed people and said, "What a twist!" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is crazy. I can't fathom Erich gaming. No. Wait, no, I he's games. a gamer. I'm a gamer. Wow. I game. Yep. Did you beat Ballfrog? Uh, no, I think I got like four levels in, maybe. It's too hard? Maybe two. There's only there three are, levels. There aren't four levels. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I played the levels that Florian didn't make as well. <laughs> okay, let's go way faster because we got a lot of shit to go through today. So mm -hmm. uh, Leonard is feeling all cucked out and sad that Penny, you know, he feels rejected by Penny because she's talking to this other guy. But Sheldon gives him the genius advice. Uh, she didn't reject you because you didn't even ask her out. And that's mm -hmm. like, that's some advice that I think would go a long way. Like fucking Elliot Roger would have killed fewer people if he heard that advice. 
And that is something that nerds and antisocial people need to get into their head is that like, it's not rejection to just not be pursued, you know, Mm -hmm. like they feel rejected even though they'd never even tried. Yeah. And it's, it's crazy because Leonard like didn't even remotely try, like he brought her her mail, like, oh, oh, so she was going to put out for that. Come on, man. What people have to realize is the worst they can say is no, which is already the answer. Yeah, that's what you want them to say. Then you can fucking get over it. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, Leonard probably wouldn't get over it. (laughs) He'd probably be destroyed. He'd buy a cat, like in the, like Sheldon says. Well, I think the the anxiety causing him pain would be, you know, overcome if he just gets the answer to the question of, like, the what if. If she says no, it's easier to heal and move on from that instead of worrying, like, oh, could it be, you know, trying to work up the courage to even ask her. But he, he, he already assumed that she said no before she even did. Like, he already took it that way. That's why he's a fool. Yeah. And as Mike might say, not Mike's the closet this time, no half measures. And boy, does he pull a half measure when he works up the courage to go ask Penny on a date. It completely fucks this up. <laughs> yeah, it was so cringe. Oh, my God. Look, I've seen the fucking it. Breaking Bad. You don't, need to, you don't need to specify this shit for me. I'm aware there's more than one. Uh, this one was for Heartsy. Okay. Oh, okay. He's a very confused little boy. He's seen Breaking Bad. I know that. You have no evidence that Hartsy Protsy has seen any of Breaking Bad. <laughs> Are you sure? I think I could find <laughs> some pretty easily on your channel. So this sounds like some some Mandela effect bullshit. Mm-hmm. Man, maybe yeah, he, maybe I'll go there, and he's just missing from all those all those episodes. <laughs> that was a Madman review. Yeah, you, you're just oh. assuming that Hartsy was in it because he sounds like one of the characters. Chief. That's, <laughs> that's fucking. <laughs> that's yeah. rude. That was the joke I didn't want to make in the comments. <laughs> rude. Wow. <laughs> it's. It, was that the unspoken mean. joke from the entire audience the whole time? Is like, I can't believe this guy sounds. I think like... that was the unspoken and often spoken <laughs> joke on the show as well. What? <laughs> e. Rich, we never said that kind of thing to Hartsy's face, did we? No, definitely not. No, we're respectful. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm just the asshole then. He would have been like mm-hmm. 17 years old at the time. You think I'm going to bully a literal child? What is this fucking young Sheldon? <laughs> I don't know. We discussed this. <laughs> there is a comment I need to read, but we'll get to that later. Okay. So, some guy wanted to let me know I was wrong and that when he was nine, he did get bullied by adults. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> she, no, don't feel bad for him. It was pretty funny. Okay. <laughs> That's what he gets for calling me out. <laughs> I, mean, I think there's probably a lot of kids getting bullied by adults. You know, you just, you, you're just in yeah, your bubble. They're, not, they're kids. Not like, their it. opinion doesn't matter. True. There you go. Already bullying them already. <laughs> Florian, They're can you people. explain to the audience how Leonard fucks up asking out Penny? Okay, so so Leonard starts off strong where he asks her out confidently, you know, and then he and then it turns out that that Penny actually thought that he was asking for the whole group, and then Leonard just cowardly goes along with with her illusion, so he can he can double cross her and then turn it into a date later, but without actually admitting to it. Yeah, and it this was, is really <laughs> shitty. It was insane. Uh, you she, really she, like this guy, though, Florian. This is the guy that you're okay with. I already, <laughs> I literally talked about this specifically, where I said that he's lying at first, but I think he's going to be sincere in the long run, okay? Like, you, you're just going to give him a chance, yeah, right? I, he's, he's I, I, be... I, believe, I believe the evidence I see before my eyes. Uh, Look, no. like, like Sheldon I, says... I, I don't he, buy the I can fix him uh, nonsense for it. Like Sheldon says, he is he is a thorough lover, okay? Leonard, Leonard is going to impress you. You'll see. I mean, that is the whole arc of the show, I guess. So. Yeah, you got to start low to end high with your character arc. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, do they we need to talk about for everyone by the end? Do we even care about this scene in the middle where he's anxious about the date and having to lie about why nobody else is showing up? Uh, and then he, he tries to make Sheldon call Penny and claim that he's sick, but then then he just doesn't do that. Uh, that's just fucking filler. Honestly, this is like one of the I think this is the worst episode so far as far as just wasting time. So. 
Oh, yeah. In episode three, Big Bang Theory hits an all time low and Young Sheldon hits its high. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Well, I, I kind of like the episode. Jeez. Seems all pretty relatable. Damn. It's like watchable if you're like getting home from work and you just want to put something on in the background or whatever. But, you know, it's not not high quality entertainment this time. Anyway, I Leonard is on this date and he, he keeps lying to Penny's face about all the other guys didn't show up for X, Y and Z. It's just going to be us. And his jealousy, his jealousy is consuming him and he's basically not taking any of Sheldon's advice. He's not supposed to be letting jealousy be his primary emotion. That's illogical. He's uh, supposed to be asking her out on a date date with a capital D. God damn it. When a girl goes on a date with him, she should know she's been dated. But no, he's a coward. Half measures all around. The black waitress walks over, offers drinks. He screams in this woman's face. No, get away. Don't interrupt this conversation. I'm trying to be jealous of Penny and Doug. He's blowing it because he's not taking Sheldon's advice is what I'm trying to say. And that's why yeah. Leonard falls Sheldon's on my right. power ranking. Listen to the gospel of Sheldon. He he knows his stuff. But then. Yeah. He, Sheldon's always so confident in, in himself. Can't take that away from him. But there is a minor character arc coming. But before we get to that, Penny has to work up a little bit of sadness by revealing that after she's fallen into a pattern in life where after every relationship she has 36 hours of non-stop a meaningless rebound sex that means nothing to her and then she feels emotionally bad afterwards so what did you guys think of this penny lore drop well it was certainly interesting that she's portrayed to be really stupid all the time but then she's able to have this much introspection after all so so that was interesting i guess I, I guess it's probably a, a a reasonable arc for her to have. Why not? I don't know. I thought it was a uh, pretty in keeping with her character. Honestly, I'm not surprised to hear it at all. <laughs> That's just, okay. It just seems like something that would, you know, maybe it's because I've seen so much more of the show in the past, but I, I don't know. Well, from the her. Serbian film review, we know how Eridge feels about sexual promiscuity in young women. So mm -hmm. we probably don't want to hear his opinion here. Oh, no. He's going to be angry. Eridge, did you did you read the comments on that? Like, I made a joke about you where I said, like, you've heard Eridge's rants about how OnlyFans <laughs> girls shouldn't be allowed near children. And so, like, you did not correct me on the show. So, so many comments were like, wow, I didn't know Eridge was so based. <laughs> I, I can't remember whether I was like doing something else at the time or because somebody was like detailing my car at the time. So I had to like oh my go God. outside for a couple minutes and just be like, yeah, because people were like complaining around the neighborhood. <laughs> Wait, were you were you in the car wash when we did that? No, it's it's like they they come out to your car and then then do it. Wow. So people in your neighborhood were complaining that your car was filthy. No, just that it was being detailed and was taking up too many parking spaces. <laughs> so would you like to like send a message to OnlyFans girls? Because like some people wrongfully think that you're based now. So you need to correct um, yeah. them. <laughs> OnlyFans girls are based. Um <laughs> make make that money queen. Get get a get some uh, money while you still can. Go have that thirty six hour yeah. sex weekend with Chad that you know will make <laughs> yeah. you that you know will make you sad afterwards. Why not? <laughs> Hey, the yeah, only I'm, fan I'm, girls, they, they're probably going to get paid for that weekend, so they're going to feel great afterwards, okay? Mm -hmm. I, I, I think... I think only Penny didn't girls, even get a penny! I know, right? Well, I, I mean, she, I guess she didn't end up doing it. Hmm. Uh, not this <laughs> time. But my point is, okay, he, here's where I think Jonathan L Lithnicky, whatever his fucking stupid name is, <laughs> this actor, he shows a bit of range here, okay? We have a moment of... Uh, actualization within Leonard because the jealousy that was consuming him and making him irritable and, and terrible floods away when he sees that the woman he loves is in genuine sadness in this moment. And he immediately grabs the olive in the cup and uses his brain to do a physics mm. trick to cheer her up and make her smile. So he, like that's that's the key here. If you really love somebody, don't approach them with jealousy and contempt like this. You know, try to try to make him happy. I think that's the lesson he might be learning here. 
I don't like that when she says, oh yeah, centrifugal force, and he's like, actually, it's centrifugal force, or whatever the fuck he Well, says. he still has a long way to come, but mm-hmm. the emotionally, he's he's on the right track. Yeah, it's a good, it was a good scene, good moment for Leonard. Yeah, just and a single he, moment. <laughs> he ruins it completely. Yeah. yeah, then he fucks it up by hitting his head under the table and bleeding <laughs> everywhere. So you know, did he did he become unconscious? He can't stand blood, right? Is that what happened? Uh, I don't know if they've added the part where he can't stand blood in this show yet. I think that comes in later. So no, I think that may have been like mentioned in the first episode. I, I hmm. don't know. These th- I can't remember these fucking episodes anymore. I, I, I wouldn't have remembered it otherwise if it hadn't been in one of these episodes. Hmm. Well, the episode ends with, they're both back at the apartment, and he says, oh yeah, no, that was not a date. You know, you'll know when I take you on a date. And then he goes and tells his friends that the date was awesome. The, <laughs> the end. What a, what a terrible person. <laughs> <laughs> no way, take that back. <laughs> He's gonna be great. He's abusing Penny's simple nature. To his own advantage. I think that's fucking sick, honestly. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I don't yeah, like if, it when if... people take advantage of women, okay? I don't like it. How, how do you take out. advantage of her, huh? <laughs> by, by lying to her at every turn about about his intentions and what he's doing. Well, he and he, when, when, he li- when he lies to his friends here, Sheldon interprets that as she must have been drunk and making bad decisions. So I think now his friends might wrongfully think he has slept with this woman who, as far as she knows, has only been out with him as a friend. So this might lead to some awkwardness and, you know, maybe a bad reputation of promiscuity in the future. You know, episode four hopefully covers this. Yeah, God, imagine yeah. if someone would think that that Penny is promiscuous. Oh, no. I mean, it's rude to kiss and tell, and it's even more rude to not kiss and lie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> obviously terrible. <laughs> uh Yep. Not kiss and tell lies. <laughs> That's right. And eat hot chip, charge they phone. Uh-huh. Twerk. <laughs> 36 hour sex <laughs> rampage. <laughs> uh let's move on to the young Sheldon episode three episode. And we are introduced finally to the character we've been waiting for. I think the the new top of the young Sheldon power rankings has to yes. be Mima. Absolutely. Okay, so wait, Mima was not introduced before this point yep. in the show. No, nope, this is her first this is her intro. This is her debut. Okay. Was it a good intro for you, E. Rich? I liked this. Like, I, I liked the character. I kind of liked the show. I think it was pretty good overall. I'm kind of shocked to say that because I didn't like Big Bang Theory at all. And, uh, this is some Malcolm in the Middle vibes, like season one uh-huh. Malcolm in the Middle vibes. You got the genius one, you got Reese in the backyard throwing firecrackers, and you got Dewey singing and dancing, but now it's a girl. Mm-hmm. And the same old fucking shit. There's an episode where they probably steal the car and Malcolm and go to the hospital when Hal's sick. You know, it's all been done yeah. before. Yeah, like this this goes down smoother for me, maybe because I like know these things and I don't feel like I'm being uh, catered to with the nerd shit in Big Bang Theory. This just feels like a family sitcom kind of environment and I can kind of not even think about the kid as Sheldon. So how are you being catered to with the nerd shit? I mean, it, it's the it's the like you're trying to cater to me by making it making all these references that I care about. But uh the references aren't particularly good, and uh, I think it's 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 the wrong way to portray nerds. I mean, it's mm. it's pretty offensive. So I don't know how you it's nerd face. Yeah, it's exactly. nerd face. I don't know how you how you're thinking you're being catered to when when you're being made fun of. Jesus, get it right. Well, yeah, they're, they're touring. Do you think? To you, do you think they don't get it? They don't. Do you think they're talking it. about all of these like franchises and all these like specific video games, making all these references? You think that's for no one? You think they should just be like referring to completely fictional things that are just made up just for the show? How would that be beneficial if you don't understand? You think what it's about? you think they don't have fucking like uh, Leonard Nimoy on the show for a reason, Florian? All of these so actors from Star posters. Trek, yeah, all, all of all of these things that are catering to pop culture nerd like shit. Hmm. Y- you're saying that's not on purpose and that nerds aren't supposed to like it. Hmm. Well, I mean, like the, the nerds are the butt of the joke. So I, I think it, it strikes a good balance of being 
like for most people. Don't you think so? I thought Purple told me the nerds are the heroes and that the jocks are the bad guys like in real life. (laughs) Well, that's uh, I think that's what they're going for. But I don't know. I think it's yeah, I think they're they're trying to clash of perspectives we have Mm -hmm. between Florian (laughs) and Purple. (laughs) <laughs> are they the heroes or the butt of the joke maybe we'll find out by the end of season one <laughs> yeah we gotta keep going uh, anyway Mima is teaching you know, he's, she's giving young Sheldon a, a coming of age moment teaching that sometimes things that you think are black and white can actually be gray maybe lying and bluffing can be used for good and it's not always bad because she's teaching young Sheldon how to gamble and play poker Mm-hmm. And and that you can use your face and emotions to lie and deceive people. And uh, this life lesson of Sheldon asks, how do you know who to trust if anybody can just lie and, and fake their emotions? And Mima says, you don't. And that's what makes life interesting. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that as a thing that young Sheldon has to come to terms with. And like the entire thing is based on the family thinking that the, the father might be having like a heart attack. But having to like put on a brave face and be like, uh, he's going to be OK. He's going to pull through. It's it's going to be all right. Like the, the everyday line you have to do to your family to keep things kind of stable. Damn, if she hadn't told him this lesson, he, he would have just believed that the dad was fine. Well, mm-hmm. <laughs> well and more importantly, at the end, uh, the children betray the grandma and steal her car. And then they they kind of have this untold agreement to lie to the mom and dad about what really happened just to keep mm-hmm. the peace and allow grandma to still stay in their life. Right. So, yeah, that's just another way of having to lie about your family or, or to your family for the sake of family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's interesting how in this episode Sheldon has like no concept at all that that people might be dishonest, and when when she tells him, "Oh, I was bluffing," and then he's like, "Do people know about this? Is this, <laughs> is this a thing?" And then, the and then we have he ponders it all night or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it keeps yeah. him really sticks with him. He has a lot of have... traumatizing moments in this episode, like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, this one traumatized like the other kids too. I think with uh, dad almost dying, but 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 Sheldon but is she- the one who sees his dad hooked up to all the tubes and with the life mm-hmm. support and shit, and like mm-hmm. it's filmed like a horror movie. Yeah, yeah. that is true. But I, I just thought it was interesting that like it specifically comes back to this episode in in Big Bang Theory where where Sheldon almost lies mm-hmm. about the the colonoscopy to cover for Leonard. You know, it's. It almost—he he definitely learned that lesson, you know. Yeah. This is the beauty of the way we're doing this show. We get to see how the the character development of young Sheldon leads to uh, how he acts in the new show or in the in the old show, I guess. And I think that's wonderful. Yeah, it must be pretty hard writing such complex characters, you know. A lot of shit to keep track of because there's so many references. Like Mima was constantly referenced in Big Bang Theory. They got to keep her consistent there. Well, here's a question. Does Mima have future sight hockey? Because she says to Georgie Jr., you're going to need to make bail someday. Do not come to me. Does Georgie end up in prison at some point? Probably. I'm willing to bet. Yeah. I'm guessing Big Bang Theory, there's some joke. Oh, well, my brother has been locked up in state penitentiary for 10 years. <laughs> then the audience. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Well, I uh, assume that she told him that so he might not <laughs> go down the path of crime, stealing cars and and running over trash cans, you know. Well, but, but he's, he's going to learn, you know. I think the the writers were in a, a future a thought, you know, kind of process here because we learn in Big Bang Theory about young Sheldon's dad dying of some sort of being fat illness. And this episode's kind of letting you know. <laughs> this episode's he's like, yeah, we didn't forget him. that. Like the whole point of this is he's too fat to live, and that's why he's having these chest pains. And like they're getting us ready for his eventual death in the show. Well, he's God, gonna that die age, at age. So yeah, really, could you could you imagine this like mildly obese man here who is like a sports coach, and you're gonna assume he's gonna die soon? Like there's like ridiculous amounts of obesity going on now, and people. <laughs> yeah. Survive it for, for longer. Well, I think they would have cast an even fatter actor, but they couldn't find one who was alive. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Oh, they they yeah. they couldn't have put Brendan Fraser into the whale. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> there, there you go. That would have been yeah. a, that would have been a, a lot of work every every episode when they're shooting it to fucking get him into that suit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but the he's, good, just, wait, he's just vegetative at home all the time. <laughs> there is a question of whether God exists, and I, I do want to cover uh, young, young Sheldon versus the pastor later. But before we get to that. Uh, if if God really does exist in the world of young Sheldon and did answer his prayer through the messenger of Pascal, when young Sheldon prays to Pascal from Pascal's wager and says, hey, tell God to save my dad, and then the dad's okay, blah, blah, blah. If the point is God is real, is God giving this heart attack to George as karma because of how rude George was to the chicken boy? Because That's the chicken boy awesome. is giving an egg delivery, chicken egg delivery to the family. He wants to give it to the girl. And then, you know, as the two fat people in the show, they try to bond, or at least the little boy does. He wants to talk about food. He said, oh, he, surely this big man will want to talk about eggs and food with me. <laughs> it's amazing. I do want to chat up a fat person by, like, trying to see if they want to talk about food. And, and George is so rude. He gives him a one word response. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. So rude. Like this kid has no friends. He tries to befriend young Sheldon and young Sheldon rejects him. And now the fellow fat guy will not talk to him about food. So fuck George. <laughs> Having a good McDonald's lately. <laughs> that's, that's not right. Young Sheldon tried to befriend him and then he didn't say anything. He got afraid of his chickens or something. No, he, like he specifically tried to make a friend, and he's like, "Tell me why. Tell me about yourself." And then he's just like staring at him, head empty. You know. Well, he should have asked him about food. <laughs> I see. Yeah. <laughs> this episode changed my power ranking quite a lot here. I think actually. Oh yeah, George is very weak fact, here. Like he's on the verge of death just from eating food. Yeah, he's he's pretty low now. It's pretty pretty unfortunate what they've done to him. Yeah, but, he'll have uh, to build himself back up over the season. Yeah, honestly, yeah. I thought this was kind of unearned that he was immediately like three episodes in was having a heart attack. Like, come on, like this this should <laughs> this should have come later in in the season. Maybe. Like, I I don't I don't feel bad for this this character that we've just met three episodes ago. Come on, I did. You know, you can see his all of his kids are so upset and everything. It's good. It's good drama. Well, yeah, it would have hit harder if we had more time with these characters, right? Maybe, but I'm sure there will be more heart attacks to come in future episodes, so we'll get that I, then. I mean, this yeah, is definitely think, the, the most the most impactful one, right? Where they like everything's crazy, and they have to steal a car. Maybe they'll steal more cars, too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they'll just do it again. Yeah, exactly the same way. Yeah, just, yeah let's, just talk about, let's talk about this car plot, because uh, Georgie, Georgie Jr., he's upset that they won't let the kids go see George in the hospital. So while uh, Grandma is asleep out in the yard in a fucking lawn chair with a lit cigarette in her hand. Mm-hmm. She knows to put it over the ashtray so she doesn't <laughs> burn to death in her sleep. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, Georgie uh, convinces Missy and young Sheldon to come with them and steal Grandma's car, take the keys right out of her fucking bathrobe pocket. And uh, young Sheldon, he leaves a note for Grandma and he puts on a football helmet and grabs a bunch of pillows uh, e Rich, you've been in a lot of car wrecks. Would this protect mm-hmm. you in the in case of a wreck? Uh, not very well, I don't think. Um, the, the helmet certainly could save yeah, your sure. life. It's gonna, it's gonna help. Come on, the helmet's gonna help, but the pillows, I don't think, are gonna do jack shit. Of course, they're gonna help. Like, you have seat belts. Like, pillows are, are gonna be about as effective as seat belts, right? Like, could the waiter have survived bones? Kendall's crash into the lake if he had a helmet and pillows? Mm. I think drowned? he drowned. Yeah, I don't <laughs> yeah. think that would have helped. Probably <laughs> not. Help drowning. <laughs> well, maybe if he hadn't been knocked out, he might have gotten out. Yeah, so maybe. <laughs> Should have had pillows. Spoiler alert. Rip. I don't know. Uh, I, is this believable from even, what, eight or nine-year-old young Sheldon here? Like, would he make the mistake of getting into a car with a, his 14-year-old brother driving? Like, that is a little illogical. I think I they mean, decided he, to sacrifice some of his character for the sake of the drama of the episode. No, no I don't sure think so. Making his, his jokes. I, I think he, he would definitely come along to see if his dad is still alive when he's specifically worried about a heart attack. Come on, man. That's not that unreal. It's not that unrealistic. I mean, sure, he might be a robot, you know, but like even then a, a robot would care about his maker, you know? 
he seems to have <laughs> lost the will to live. Like he's putting himself in serious mortal danger getting into this vehicle. I mean, that vehicle wasn't even going fast. I, I don't know. It's not that, not that crazy. I thought you were fuck cars. Now you support it because the child's driving. I mean, what are you going to do? You're in America. You're not going to get anywhere without a car. <laughs> Like, Ema gets there pretty quick on foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did she, she like beat the kids there? Something? Yeah, that's what she's asking. Like, how did they get so lost? You know, Irish. <laughs> have you ever seen a piece of '80s media where kids are riding bikes places in the suburbs? It's unrealistic. Yeah, a lot of them, actually. It's, I can't think of one. I've seen Stranger Things in that. Et. <laughs> it. Goonies. No. Space. No. Hmm. Uh, I don't think so. Explorers. All, every single one of hey, those, they steal Mima's car. Hey, the only <laughs> one is The Simpsons, where he rides the bike every day, okay? Mm -hmm. and that hey, wasn't the In 80s. the opening credits. In the opening credits. Oh, wait, does, does he have a skateboard? He's yeah, a skateboard. Yeah, never mind. I'm wrong. Yeah. There's no <laughs> Florian thinks so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bart <laughs> a big bike rider. <laughs> you're, 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 you somehow misremember the fucking intro to The Simpsons, and even but, I. As, there must be. The I, I, I swear, there's a bike the somewhere in this in this intro. Who's riding a bike? Like someone else, like some random background character is probably on a bike, but I don't know. I okay. know Lisa rides a bike. Yeah, Lisa. Yeah. That's it. Okay. The She's final thing we need to discuss one. <laughs> are the church scenes. What everybody's on the edge of their seat to hear. Yeah, this where... was fucking amazing. I remember in one of these early episodes, <laughs> we predicted that he would Sheldon would get up and debate the pastor, and it's yeah, finally pre come. Predicted. It's finally Just come true. I don't know where. How how did he guess that one right? Huh? <laughs> I don't know. I, I I was hopeful, and God answered my prayers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. E. Rich, can you tell me the difference between a pastor and a preacher? Um, is is it the type of church they're at? Is it like pastors? are at like smaller churches and then preachers are at bigger churches. I, I have no idea. I'm actually thinking that preacher is, is not like you, you have a priest and I think a priest has to be educated for a certain amount of time, but I think they allow people without that education to preach and then they'd be preachers. You what know? about a doctor of sermonizing? <laughs> I don't, think that I don't know if that's a thing. That's not a real one. I don't think, I don't think they give you doctorates for a, uh... Well, in my view, okay. they're all equally fake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. pastors are single church people, and then preachers are like several church people. They go preachers from church are, to church? Preachers are nomadic. Preachers go from church to church teaching people. Well, they have pastors no, like, go to go a to single either. church. So what are the righteous gemstones? <laughs> Because they went to China in the episode outdated. whatever the fuck. Okay, we don't know. I've never seen it. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I've never heard of this. It's uh, basically Succession, but in the South. Ah. Uh, okay. I've never seen Succession either. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, well, I, Rich I, says he can't hear anything and he doesn't know what's going on. That's no well, good. Who gives go. a fuck? God is, God is in his revenge. It sounds time. like a skill issue. Tell him we can't hear him either. Yeah, tell him we don't care. <laughs> so <laughs> there's an iconic moment where young Sheldon raises his hand in church and he says, that's wrong to the, to the pastor. And I can't wait to abuse this in future memes in my videos because there's going to be <laughs> so many opportunities. And uh, he goes up to debate the pastor in front of everybody and the pastor wants to know, what are the odds God exists? And young Sheldon says, I, I think they're zero. I believe in science. Science is facts. Religion is faith. Now, we're all three of us standing and applauding at this point. Yes, I thought this was this <laughs> yeah. is wonderful. This is what I want to see. I want to see that, uh, that fucking fraud preacher get owned with facts and logic by a beautiful young atheist. Okay, this is they were red pilling the masses sport. on CBS in fucking prime time sitcom. The whole yes. family learning these facts and logics. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's amazing. Um, and then we got this this priest who is not even he doesn't even believe in in evolution. How how common is that in America that that they'll just outright deny evolution? Uh, common, I think. You think I like, interviewed the, all the pastors? Common. I mean, you, 
Do you must know some pastas, right? <laughs> what? I'll check the stats. On must that. I? I? I don't know. You must have been to church at some point, considering how edgy you are. You, you must have really rejected it. Yeah, I, I don't know if I ever asked him about evolution. Okay, well, if they don't preach about it, I guess that's a start. Maybe in the like... South in the 80s, they were especially prevalent where they rejected all forms of science and, and that kind of thing. But maybe now they can uh, compartmentalize it in their brain. Apparently, uh, 34% of adults in the U.S. believe that humans have always existed in their present form. So, <laughs> Oh, jeez. Yeah. Well, I guess they must be going to creationist churches then where they get that idea. Damn. Too so bad Erich is... isn't here to give us the based opinion. Yeah, <laughs> he probably knows all about it. Well, hey, I, that brings us to the end, so let's do our vote. Three weeks in a row, I think the winner is going to have to be Young Sheldon was the better episode. Easily, yeah. Yeah, af afraid so. Um, <laughs> the introduction I, I of Mima is one of the better character introductions of any uh, sitcom I can think of. Like, it's on par with meeting Grandma Ida and Malcolm in the Middle. This might even be better because there's actually, like, a character arc and the character's somewhat likable. Although, maybe the the realism of having an actually evil grandma who hates you is, uh, you know, a little <laughs> more true to life, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, Mima's my God. great. She's and, immediately number two on my list here. Wait, who's above sure. Mima? Because she's number one to me. It's the it's the chicken boy now. Uh, oh, I've bumped uh, wow. the the cheeseburger feminist teacher down a few pegs, down to part number three, I think. <laughs> yeah, we so, do know yeah. that God is on the chicken boy side because he punished George. <laughs> yeah, they do say that all of his eggs uh, poison the whole family, though. The day that, after, that's so. also karma. <laughs> Well, they probably didn't refrigerate them. They just left them out. So that's probably why. Yeah, they just left them out for fucking Missy to play with or whatever she was doing there. Yeah, Sheldon knows right, not to, to put... E. Rich is back. <laughs> Sheldon yeah, doesn't put the, the knife back into the jam, you know, but he, he's okay with the, the eggs just rotting away. <laughs> okay, E. Rich, do you agree with us that Big Bang Theory was better this week? No. <laughs> Well, you're already outvoted. Wait, why not? Yeah, we all agreed. Yeah, yeah. what's up? To the degree that I did not realize the show was actually all right. I just thought Young Sheldon was awful. But you were proven wrong? No. No, not at no. all. You thought you, but you still think Young Sheldon is awful? No, no. No. I mean, like, I thought you said I was being proven wrong by uh, Bing Bang Theory being better than Young Sheldon. Hmm. Okay, so so it's four votes for Big Bang Theory. Yeah, no. <laughs> Makes sense. Three votes for Big Bang Theory, one vote for Young Sheldon. Okay, wow. put it in the uh, record we're books, have to folks. Check your math on this. <laughs> Write it down. What do you think of Mima as a character, E. Rich? Are you excited to see her again next week when you return? I thought she, I thought she was fun. Yeah, I thought she was fun. And you are going to be here to keep this Applebee's atmosphere, right? We'll we'll see. Uh -oh. uh, it, it very depends on my work schedule. I don't want to go back to the gay bar. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Hey, I I just want to mention that that grandma uh, Mima probably killed her husband. Like, how do we feel about that one? Deserved it. I probably yeah. deserved it. I I trust her judgment on this. <laughs> wow, it's pretty pretty rough, you know. Like she's just introduced and she she says he. He died of a heart attack for, for insurance purposes. Wow. Mm -hmm. yep, she killed him for the money. Rip. E. Rich, do you have anything you want to plug? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at uh, T-Z-A-R. Wait, R-E-V-A-N. I don't know why that took me so long to get out. And then on uh, Letterboxd at Revan138 on there. I just watched uh, Monkey Man and then... Uh, Wait, I swear to God, I watched something else. The Aristic Cats, but I already talked about the Aristic Cats. The Brave the, Little Toaster? Bridge, no. I did not watch the Brave Little Toaster, no. Stuart Little 2? Someone's got a no. crazy amount of crickets in the background. It's driving me nuts. How is this That's happening? probably Purple playing with his pen again. That's not true. That's fucking okay. I've been I've been making an effort this time. I promise. If you want to read some insane opinions on Letterbox, go follow Purple Colonel. 
Like you're you're just fucking mad, okay? This is just seething out of you because of my fucking Simpsons take, okay? Yeah, I, I mean, I think Simpsons everybody would mention. be outraged by that. I don't care. They're all wrong. Yeah. They're all wrong. Yeah. <laughs> like, dude, you you gotta work on yourself. You, like, if you if you got an unpopular <laughs> opinion, you can do better than just like I'm obviously right, okay? I, this doesn't even need to be elaborated. I oh. I just have such a strong opinion, you know? Like, I make are... arguments here when I, when I have unpopular opinions, okay? And you're just like, nah, it's better. Like, my really? friends fucking speaks to me, okay? That's the that's the point. It speaks mm-hmm. to me, and Simpsons does what not. What is it saying? I'm not Forty years old. It's, it's telling me to kill myself because how, how it's many, fucking meaningless. How many, how many yeah. Simpsons episodes have you watched? Probably like a couple dozen at least. Oh I've my seen, like, god! Some of the Golden Age <laughs> Simpsons okay. stuff. Oh, we're yeah. getting an opinion that is uninformed. Yeah. He has not even watched the show. It's like when he Florian said that Roy was bad. He skipped through Simpsons. it. Oh. My god. <laughs> You have to watch, have to the, watch the whole a thing. Seasons of the Simpsons. You have to watch all the first fucking ten or eleven to say not, to compare the golden age. <laughs> I did. A, I did mm-hmm. start watching it uh, like season one a while back. So I don't know. Maybe I'll pick it back up. Mm-hmm. What else do you do? Be a price, sir. Just watch the Simpsons. No, I want to play fucking video games and oh. stuff. I got other oh, things to do. Like, like the worst kind of nerd, just playing video games all day. Unbelievable. Yeah, you should be <laughs> making you, video games all day. All day. <laughs> yeah. I, I play stocks, okay? <laughs> okay, okay. Uh-huh. Well, that's like a rich man's hobby. <laughs> yeah. Florian, what are you going to plug this week? We're, we're finally going to do that regular show thing where we review every episode for mm-hmm. however long. And, and it's going to have Mumpkin it next week. So, so get hyped oh, for a regular show. Featuring Mumpkin and Purple. That's gonna be yeah. crazy. And and t- if you like people yelling e- at each other, I yell at Purple a lot for his stupid, stupid fucking cartoon opinions. On He's that like one. your Florian. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. They gave Rich Evans his own now you Rich know what Evans. It's like, Florian. That's fucked up. <laughs> I, at least I think I'm not smug when I'm controversial, okay? Like Jesus, Purple. <laughs> Uh, you, <laughs> you, all the you think sorry. that? <laughs> okay. I'm the humblest there is, okay? I don't know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yep. and, uh, I didn't get to actually officially plug anything. You just fucking yelled at me. So uh, follow me on Letterboxd and on YouTube. And uh, I was recently banned on Twitter. So follow what? me on one. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, I called What'd someone a cunt and you Twitter decided that was oh. too bad. So. Follow me at Purple Colonel SP on there, and yeah, mm-hmm. that's it. You gotta be real careful, you know. It's a lot of offended people on Twitter. I guess so. <laughs> I, I should nice uh, start on it. Should put out a warning that when the Velma Fan Club podcast returns, I might be taking a break from doing this show until Velma's over. So we might get five wow. weeks of Velma when, instead. Oh shit! When does oh. Velma come? In like ten days, I think. Hell yeah! Jesus it's it's at like the end of April. Go. Why, why do you sound shit. like that's a bad show? That's crazy. I'm not, I'm not watching Velma. I'll watch your podcast, but I'm not going to watch that shit. <laughs> yeah, we weren't going to invite you. I think that's, that's I, I was, one I time asked where to be invited. I'm I'm just I'm not going to watch it. Regardless, one time, okay? so so it's mutual. One time oh, where our podcasts are probably better than the actual show. Oh, the only time know. is when we review Velma. <laughs> yeah, as opposed to here, where uh, all the audience should definitely check out the Big Bang Theory as we're watching it. Mm-hmm. And Young you, Show. Yeah, it's this little you indie show. You, you might not it. have ever heard of it. Mm-hmm. See you next week, folks. Bazinga. Bye bye. Bye. Ba. Bazinga. Zing. Zinga. Ga. But the <laughs> fuck you, we, we're never gonna get that right, boys. <laughs> Especially boys. now that there's four people and three syllables. It's all fucked up. Bazinga boys. <laughs> yeah, it's four syllables. Yeah, bazinga boys is four syllables. <laughs> oh, that's true. That'd be good. Yeah.